Welcome to the Real Health Podcast, where we help you achieve the best and strongest version of yourself. Be sure to follow us online on Instagram, Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe on YouTube. You are listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick, Episode 2, Sugars. All right, welcome to the Real Health Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick from Salt Lake City, Utah, owner and operator of Align Family Chiropractic or Align Utah. You can find us on the web at www.wealignutah. You can find us on Facebook, search Align Utah, find us on Instagram. But we are a maximized living office. And the cool thing is, is that with over 450 offices worldwide, we are the only maximized living office in the state of Utah or in the Salt Lake Valley. Uh, so the five essentials of maximized living, that is the system that we deliver in our office, you know, same, same system that gets delivered to Olympic athletes. Um, but we are the only place that you can get this here in Salt Lake City. And we're talking about total food makeover coming from our essential number three, which is maximizing your quality nutrients. Uh, and total food makeover is really changing and transforming the way that you shop, the way that you approach food, the way that you prepare food and the way that you eat food. And we're looking at today at sugar, you know, really looking at in detail sugar and what sugar does to our bodies, you know, and why sugar is such a problem. And, you know, if you're, you know, most people have heard this today. You know, you've heard it from me. You've heard it from Dr. Oz. You've heard it from the news. You've heard it all over the place, but we're still doing it. You know, Americans eat 63 pounds of of high fructose corn syrup. So that's a small person, right? 63 pounds, a small child maybe, uh, of high fructose corn syrup a year, which is insane. And most of us are thinking, well, where could I possibly be getting that from? I never eat high fructose corn syrup, but it's in there. It's in all of your food. And we eat 156 pounds of sugar each year. And what that equates to is one of the five pound, you know, brick packs Uh, The five-pound bricks of sugar, every man, woman, and child in America eats one of those every 10 days, okay? And so that, you know, we're not sitting down with a spoon and eating straight white, you know, granulated sugar, so we just don't know where it's coming from. And so that's why we have to look at the first principle of a total food makeover has to be decreasing and eliminating your sugars. Now, you're still going to get natural sugars. You're going to get natural carbs from vegetables, uh, from fruits, from all different sources, you know, different natural carbs, but you're decreasing and eliminating all the higher glycemic foods, all the sugary foods, of course, with anything added sugar, but also just minimizing how much sugar you're taking into your bodies, okay? And so, the reason why, you know, we want to decrease sugar is, you know, we always talk about sugar and equating it to the modern day equivalent of cigarettes. Because cigarettes, you know, years ago, there was a time when everybody smoked cigarettes. I mean, literally, everybody would smoke, you know, you'd smoke at work, you'd smoke on the bus, you'd smoke, uh, you know, at a basketball game, you'd, uh, everybody would smoke, professional athletes would stop playing and then go smoke. Um, But, you know, that's changed, obviously, and it's taken a long time. You know, I mentioned in the last podcast that with my first year of chiropractic college in Davenport, Iowa, you could still smoke in the bars. Uh, So it's changed. It took a long time, but things have changed. And the reason why is because the research was coming out of how much damage it was doing to our bodies, how much cancer it was causing, how much lung disease and emphysema it was causing, uh, and everything that smoking was doing, firsthand, secondhand, and even thirdhand, uh, what it was doing. So we want to start with, you know, what is sugar doing to our bodies? Because when you realize what it's doing, then you don't do it. You know, you never let your kids, I love asking this question to parents, uh, would you let your kids smoke a cigarette? And and the the looks that I get are hilarious. And it says, well, you know, well, what if they really wanted it? You know, what if they begged? What if they cried? 
oh my gosh, then you'd have to, right? If they threw a fit, you'd give them a cigarette, right? You'd probably light it for them, right? If they threw a fit, you have to appease them. No, of course not. You would never, you know, nobody ever would, I I hope. Uh, And you'd probably get, you know, arrested if you did. Uh, But that's what we do with sugar. And so when you begin to look at sugar the same way that you look at cigarettes, you begin to look at what you're feeding your kids the same way as, you know, giving your kids a cigarette. So the top 10 reasons to avoid sugar. Number one, sugar is the primary dietary cause of obesity. So sugar actually causes your body to store fat based on a couple of different mechanisms and pathways we're going to talk about in a minute called insulin. Insulin then can burn out, causing your body to, you know, not or to, to basically store fat. Uh, then that can also affect a hormone called leptin, which also causes your body to not stop eating, you know, and all these things cause hormonal and metabolic imbalances. We're going to talk about in a second and number five, but they're the primary cause of obesity. And, you know, and obesity, you know, is not just an aesthetic thing that is destroying our overall health. And we've got about 35 to 40% of our country right now falling in the obese category. Number two, sugar increases the acidity of your body. And so the major thing with acidity is not only does it cause aches, pains in the joints it can, uh, but also cancer cells thrive in an, in, in, in an acidic environment. And all diseases actually thrive in an acidic environment. And sugar causes your body to stay acidic. The opposite of acidic is alkaline. And when you stay in an alkaline state, you actually help fight disease and fight cancer. Number three, sugar causes inflammation. So inflammation is at the root of many of our chronic diseases today. Heart disease, uh, you know, fibromyalgia, autoimmune conditions almost always have a inflammatory component to them. And sugar causes inflammation, cellular inflammation, joint inflammation, um, arterial inflammation like heart disease uh, caused by sugar. Sugar is the primary reason, number four, primary reason for high cholesterol. And in particular, high LDL, bad cholesterol, low HDL, good cholesterol, and high triglycerides, all caused by sugar, red flag markers for heart disease. Sugar causes hormonal and metabolic imbalances. Sugar disrupts your hormones through insulin, through leptin, but then it can also throw off all of your other hormones because of those imbalances. So like your thyroid hormone, like your adrenal hormones, Huge, huge red flag, adrenal burnout or thyroid problems, hypothyroidism can be caused by sugar. Uh, Number six, sugar is your fast track to diabetes. So diabetes, the fastest growing disease in the world, fastest growing disease in our country too. Uh, Children are the fastest growing segment of the population getting diabetes. Uh, And it's about one out of three people are either diabetic or pre-diabetic right now. 25% 25% of them don't even know it. And here's the thing. Here's the, the bottom line. It takes an average of eight years off of a person's life. So it takes an average of eight years off of a person's life caused directly by sugar. Uh, number seven, sugar is a known toxin. Okay, so sugar actually causes toxicity. That's a known fact. That's why your body secretes insulin because insulin gets it out of the bloodstream because if too much sugar is in your bloodstream, you die. Uh, Sugar leads to heart disease. So through some of the other mechanisms that we talked about through inflammation, uh, sugar actually causes and leads to heart disease. Number nine, sugar is an anti-nutrient, which means it can actually bind binding sites for other nutrients and block those sites. It's like if somebody, you know, stuck uh, glue in your keyhole, you're not going to be able to get in your car, you're not going to be able to get in your house, because you can't bind those binding sites. That's what sugar does. And number 10, sugar promotes cancer. Okay, so sugar, there's certain cancer cells that actually feed and fuel on sugar. And, you know, we know this because when they detect cancer, certain cancer cells, they'll do a PET scan. And what they have you do before they do the PET scan is they have you drink uh, the solution. And what it is, is it's radioactive sugar. And the radioactive sugar goes right to the tumor because the tumor is feeding on it. Then they do a scan where they can pick up where the radioactive sugar is. They can tell where the cancer is. So sugar fuels cancer. 
So the reason that this happens, you know, mechanisms, we're not going to get into a, a lot of the, you know, science and bore you guys, but the biggest thing is what sugar does is, is it affects a hormone called insulin. And most of us have heard of insulin. We either, you know, know somebody or we are diabetic and we have to take insulin or we know that a spike in blood sugar spikes insulin, but we don't really understand the widespread effects of why insulin you know, has such dramatic health benefits, not just, you know, we're not talking cavities or even just weight gain. We're talking hormone, metabolic imbalances, cancer, heart disease, you know, the things that are killing Americans today, uh, sugar is at the cause and insulin is really the factor of how. And so a couple things that insulin does when you boost insulin in the body, and that's what happens when you get a, a, you know, you eat sugar, you know, your blood sugar increases, then insulin has to increase because because insulin takes sugar out of the blood, takes it to be stored. So that's what you can think of is that insulin uh, binds sugar and it escorts it from the blood into the cells. So a couple things that too much insulin can do, increase inflammation like we talked about. Uh, it can decrease your liver detox pathways. So decrease your body's ability to detoxify and get rid of harmful things. It can increase your blood pressure. It can increase your cholesterol, that unhappy triad that we talked about. It can have a big effect on your neurotransmitters, which means dopamine, serotonin, different neurotransmitters that affect your mood, your ability to concentrate, how happy or sad you are, like antidepressants affect serotonin dramatically, dramatically impacted by sugar. It increases the oxidative stress, which is one of the other mechanisms why, uh, by which it causes cancer because it increases oxidative stress. So we've all heard of antioxidants and how we should eat more antioxidants. Well, the reason why is because that combats oxidative stress caused by sugar. In men, insulin will increase estrogen. So that's a, you know, a reproductive hormone. Uh, and in men, you don't want it to be increased. It will cause hormone imbalances. And in women, it will increase testosterone. So it causes hormone imbalances in both men and women because of the insulin response. Okay. And so this isn't just, you know, us talking about uh, that today. And it's not just, you know, your candies, your sodas, it's your grains and your breads too. And so you may have seen this in some of the popular best-selling books right now. There's a book out there called Wheat Belly by William Davis. Okay. And so what we're going to get into in a second here is what you can do about it uh, because the grains in our country, they turn to sugar. They have the exact same effect on insulin as the uh, candy or Skittles. Maybe not the same uh, you know, in, the, in a given amount of time, but the same net response on insulin. So there's a book out there by William Davis. It's called Wheat Belly, and it says, lose the wheat, lose the weight, and find your path back to health because wheat through the insulin response causes all these imbalances. Another one that's a number one New York Times bestseller is called Grain Brain, and that's by David Perlmutter. They're both MDs, William Davis and David Perlmutter. And it says, the surprising truth about wheat, carbs, and sugar your brain's silent killers because these have an effect on your brain. There's even some literature to suggest now that that Alzheimer's and dementia are really more of a type three diabetes, and that you know there's an insulin component to those diseases. So it's really you know you name the top ten diseases in our country, they all have a sugar component. Um, so you have to look out for them. Before we get into, you know, what you can do, what foods you want to increase, what foods you want to decrease, you have to look at it as an addiction too. So just like a cigarette, you know, after your body has nicotine, it needs more nicotine. It wants that little hit, that little dopamine, that little beta endorphin hit uh, of satisfaction by getting another cigarette. Same thing is true of sugar. So, you know, you eat sugar, you like it, you crave it, it's addictive. Uh, so dopamine is released so that you become addicted. Uh, insulin is secreted. That's what we're talking about with the insulin pathway. So your blood sugar levels fall rapidly. So as your blood sugar levels fall rapidly, you start to go into hunger and cravings again. And so the cycle is repeated. And so it's an addictive pathway that has to be stopped. The easiest way to stop it is to stop it cold turkey 
and just cut and stop the cycle, eliminate these sugars. So what can you do? That's the most important thing we're going to get into now is what can you do uh, about, about your sugar. So the first thing, completely avoid and eliminate the obvious sources. Okay, so that's your soda. Soda is the number one source of sugar in our country. You know, if you're drinking soda, period, uh, don't. Um, that's an easy solution. Just by getting rid of soda, you're decreasing your sugar content dramatically. Now, that doesn't mean that you switch to diet sodas because the artificial sweeteners are just as harmful, uh, so and probably more harmful. So do not switch to the artificial sweetened sodas. Switch to something like water. Also, don't switch to juice because what we're going to talk about in a sec is that juice, a lot of times, will have the same sugar content as soda. But the obvious sources, soda, candy, ice cream, snacks, you know, the sugary things, donuts, you know, they're going to be pretty obvious. I say obvious because if we had a room of 100 people and we took a poll, uh, 99 out of 100 would know that those are bad. Uh, maybe 100 out of 100, I would hope. But most people would know that those are bad ones. Here's the next one. Eliminate the white foods. Okay, so that's anything with white sugar, white flour, white rice, white pasta, white potatoes even. Okay, so anything white, you know, your white cakes, your white muffins, uh, but your white Wonder Breads, absolutely. White rice, that's a big one for a lot of people that they think that they're, you know, eating really healthy because they're eating rice. But, you know, what rice isn't necessarily white. Uh, so you want to get rid of your white rice. It's been bleached. Your white flour, especially. You can find flour alternatives to bake with that are sugar-free, grain-free. So get rid of the white foods. Number three is a trap that too many people fall into. It's avoid too many fruits. Okay, so we tend to think that fruits, because they are healthy, that we can eat an unlimited amount of them. Uh, that's not necessarily true. And especially the worst thing that I see here is fruit juices. Fruit juices, fruit snacks, you know, even if it says made with 100% fruit juice, that's still pure sugar. You know, we were looking at one the other day, an Odwalla brand. This was, uh, you know, one of the superfood drinks at Costco when we were doing a shop with the doc, it has 29 grams of sugar per serving. That's astronomical. That's in a cup. That's in eight ounces, 29 grams of sugar. That's about 10 packets, uh, you know, of, of sugar that you'd pour into your coffee or tea at McDonald's or something. 10 of those packets in one serving of this superfood fruit, fruit drink. And so are you getting some vitamins? Are you getting some nutrients, minerals? Absolutely, I'm sure you are, uh, even though it's been pasteurized. But for the most part, avoid those fruit juices, apple juice, grape juice. Avoid them, avoid them, avoid them. Even the fruits that you're eating, stick with lower glycemic fruits. That's a glycemic index. That's how quickly these foods turn to sugar in your body. So the lowest glycemic fruits are berries. So any berries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, berries, and Granny Smith apples. Another rule with those with fruits is even though they are, you know, okay to eat, they're lower glycemic, you want to eat those earlier in the day. You don't want to have any, any uh, you know, fruits or grains or high sugary foods late in the day because then there's more of a tendency that they're going to get stored as fat. So better to eat those early in the day. That's why, you know, if you've done something like our 28-day challenge, um, or done the advance plan or the core plan even, you know that we encourage to eat those early in the day. And then the last one is eliminate grains. So this is the toughest one for most people to wrap your head around to eliminate your breads and grains. And if you think about why, you know, you're not crazy. Uh, this is the way that we've been taught. Look at the food pyramid. Look at what's at the base. It is your breads, your grains, your carbs, your pastas. But that food pyramid is what's led us to where we are today, being the sickest, most overweight, most over-medicated country on the face of the earth. So if you'd like to continue following that food pyramid, you can expect to wind up where most people are winding up. But you instead, you have to flip that upside down and eliminate those breads and grains. Grains turn to sugar in the body uh, and cause long-term hormone imbalance, 
in balance because of that insulin response. So don't be fooled by labeling like whole wheat or nine grain wheat or 21 grain bread. Uh, don't be fooled by that. You just want to eliminate them. There's ways that you can still bake. You can use coconut flour. You can use almond flour. There are different things that you can use to still get your baked goods. Uh, but just avoid those breads, avoid those pastas, and stay away from them if you want to lose weight, if you want to be healthy. So the next thing that you have to do and, and to make this a reality is you know, avoid those things but the next thing is read your ingredients, okay? And so if sugar is going to get snuck in everywhere. So when you flip over the back of your food label, a couple things that you want to look for in the nutrition facts, you can see how much sugar is in per serving. So that's the first thing that you want to look at is how much sugar you're getting. Then you want to look at the ingredients themselves though. So where is the sugar coming from? Uh, is it coming from you know evaporated cane syrup or is it coming from corn solids or is it coming from one of the hidden hidden words like uh, dextrose or maltodextrin maltose there's all these hidden words that still mean sugar you know you can find it as agave nectar beet sugar brown rice syrup cane juice crystals high fructose corn syrup corn solids all those still mean sugar so flip it over and read the label but here's the thing is in today's world, if you want to be healthy, uh, if you want to be healthy, you want to lose weight, you want to correct a hormone imbalance, or you just want to, to live your life to the fullest potential and just be as healthy as possible, you really can't do that while eating the standard American diet, following the uh, USDA food pyramid and eating all these grains and sugars. You have to eliminate your sugars and that has to be the first step. So in the next few weeks, we're going to talk about the other principles of the total food makeover. Sugars is today, fats is next time, proteins and toxins. So, so make sure that you get in the archives of the Real Health Podcast. You listen to all those. And this sugar one, you know, get this on repeat. Listen to it on your way to work. This isn't something that you hear once and you've got it. You know, I had a patient the other day at a shop with a doc. She said, this is my fourth shop with a doc. And you say almost the same thing every time, but I hear it differently each and every time, depending on where I'm at in my life. So you're going to need to hear this on repeat. You're going to need to become a master of reading your food labels, and you're going to need to learn where your sugars are coming from so you can avoid and eliminate them. But make sure that you tune in next time. Keep following the Real Health Podcast. Follow the blog on www.wealignutah. That's W E W E A L I G N A L I G N Utah, U T A H, wealignutah.com. Sign up for our newsletter and keep following. Uh, we wish you guys the best. Maximize your lives and really you know, live up to your potential this week and cut out those sugars. Thank you for listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.